out a little bit and we're going to uh, we're going to hit up on the tourniquet that we got right here and this is a uh, this is the tourniquet that's uh, was supplied by uh, in, in this primus kit and if you have the ability to purchase a tourniquet and keep one uh, anytime you're out uh, whether you're out just out to have some fun while you're hiking or you know maybe if you're going out to the range to, to shoot some guns great piece of equipment to uh, to have with you the one that we have here is what we call a cat a combat applicated tourniquet it's a great piece of equipment that uh, most military people are actually have with them. But this is the one we've got here. Now, there are several different types of tourniquets out there. And I've already explained kind of the uh, airsoft ones, so kind of stay away from the airsoft ones. Yeah, these ones are a little bit more pricey. If you need them to save your life, you want maybe a little more pricier to save your life. This one right here, we, like we said, is called a cat. Other ones out there is a, uh, a mat, which is a mechanically applied uh, tourniquet. There's a uh, soft tourniquets. There, there, so there's several ones out there to use. Basically, if you are going to keep one of these uh, in your uh, IFAT kit, make sure that you practice with it. Because practice makes perfect. You know, it should be muscle memory when we're putting these on because I guarantee you you're going to be having some, some crazy thoughts if you're sitting there watching your blood splurt out of your body and you're in a hurry to take care of it. Now, let's talk about what a, a tourniquet is used for. A tourniquet uh, is used for hemorrhage control, so bleeding. Now, the, the main use for a tourniquet is to, uh, to start an arterial bleed or when you have spurting, uh, the spurting of your blood. If you just have a, a continuous oozing that's uh, not necessarily an arterial bleed, that's more of a venous bleed, still can be dangerous, but uh, if you hold some, some pressure with a bandage, you'll probably be able to get to stop where the uh, arterial bleeding, a little bit more harder to stop with just putting uh, pressure on it. Now, the other side of it that's nice about these is uh, you can use it to hold a bandage on. Say if you, uh, if maybe you just have venous bleeding or just a continual ooze and you want a little bit of pressure but you don't want to sit there and hold it uh, all the time. Put a bandage on it and we can put the tourniquet on, tighten it down just a little bit just so it holds that pressure on there and uh, it should take care of it. If you happen to have a couple of tourniquets, which if you have one, you have none. If you have two, you have one uh, using that theory it's better to have two with you. If for some reason maybe you fall and either break an arm or a leg, we can use this to help splinting. Take a, a stick or a board and uh, place a tourniquet, tighten it down a little bit on each side of it to kind of help hold that, uh, that splint in place. So a great piece of equipment and it's got multiple uses for it. Whichever one that you're gonna go with, you know, make sure you can practice with it. So find a, a training one or buy a couple of them and make sure you save your, your the, the real life one um, for in case you need to use it in real life. The other side of that is uh, one nice thing about these and one of the reasons why the military likes to have their guys carry this is this can be, this can be applied by just one uh, with one hand. Um, and as you can see, once it comes on, you can get it right here, you can grab it and bite it with your teeth and it'll pull that tight and then use whether it's your teeth or one arm to, uh, to twist it down. So uh, I will say uh, when you get this, you might want to prep it if you think you may ever need to use it. So this one was supplied in a, in a plastic bag with two rubber bands. So we're just going to take the two rubber bands off and, uh, and kind of show you this here. When you want to stage this or set this for if there may be a, a need for it, you want, to, you want to get the straps all straightened out a little bit, maybe add a little bit more room right here because uh, basically what we can do with this is this will fit all the way around our legs, all the way pretty much on any large portion of our body we need it to. Now, if you do hit a, an artery and you're bleeding a lot, you probably have anywhere from about 30 seconds to maybe a minute and a half at the most before you uh, start having an, an altered level of consciousness, maybe even going unconscious. And, uh, and so we need to make sure that this is readily uh, available, having some practice with it so that uh, so we make sure we put it on correctly. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to slide it straight on. And, uh, and depending on what manufacturer you're looking at, you can, um, they, they, most of them say between three and five inches above the wound. So if we're saying the wound right here, we can come up here about right here and we'll be okay to put it on. If you're too afraid to get that close so that you might be doing further injury, you're not gonna do hurt anything by coming up to the very top part, uh, whether it be at the top part of the arm uh, or the top part of the leg uh, and putting this on. Both ways are just gonna make it ha uh, uh, 
stop that blood supply going down and, and you're going to stop the bleeding. So what we've done is we've, uh, we've put it around the arm and as you see I'm just going to tighten up the strap a little bit here and make it nice and easy. And then we're just going to start doing the webbing. Start twisting this. And it's just like a, if you've been in the Boy Scouts, it's just like putting a stick uh, on here and, and just start twisting it up. Now, how tight do you go? Well, if, if you happen to have a bandage on here and you can't see whether you've stopped the bleeding there, then just reach down a little bit lower and it looks like we've already stopped it right there. So I don't feel that radial pulse like you normally would. So I think we're there.